Hey there, you know I love seamless sweaters, let me count the ways, but sometimes I like to knit something bottom up where the only seam is the seam on the shoulder. So let me show you one of my favorite ways for closing that seam, I think you're gonna love it. So we're gonna pretend that this is our shoulder. Now I'm gonna show you this working on a flat straight across edge. You can also do this on a shoulder that is tapered. You're, it's basically the same exact thing, you'll just follow the taper. But for the ease of showing you this trick for the first time, we're going to do it on a straight across piece of knitting. Now this represents the front of our body and this represents the back. And what I like to do is actually open up the garment. So the section that I'm seaming is right in the center where I'm looking at both right sides and it just makes it a little bit easier to do. So you're going to need a darning needle and you can use the same yarn you used in your garment or you can even use a lighter weight yarn. Sometimes if I've knit something that's quite heavy worsted or Aran weight, sometimes I'll like to use a strand of yarn that's nice and strong and a little bit uh, lighter weight. You can do that as well, although typically you'll choose a color that's more similar than what I'm doing, but I did this so that you can really see my stitches and see what I'm doing. So I'm using a contrasting color, but you will probably not wanna do a contrasting color when you do this at home. So with the uh, bound off edges together, I'm actually going to begin on the very edge. This is a little bit of a setup row, but I'm gonna go under the two legs of the stitch right here on the edge. It's a little bit goofy on the edges, as you know get it on my needle and then just pull the working yarn under. I'm going to leave a little tail so that I can tie that off and weave it in later. I'm going to do the same thing on this top piece, go under both legs of the edge stitch. Now I'm not going to tighten my work up for a little bit because I want you to see what it is I'm doing. Now I'm going to go back and forth from bottom to top, going under both legs of the stitch that's directly next to the bind off. Do you see that right there? underneath and you'll notice this is a little bit of a, a weaving process now I'm going to go above and I'm going straight into the very next stitch keep that tail out of the way and then back down into this very next stitch on the bottom piece under both legs make sure you are staying in line with the columns of stitches it can be really easy to suddenly end up sort of between stitches where you're taking one leg from one stitch and one leg from the other stitch not that it's the end of the world but it is nice if you can sort of keep the groove going evenly all the way across now you can see i think these stitches starting to develop do you see that as they're starting to come together always going under both legs and then right down below into the very next stitch under both legs now i've gotten a few stitches in here i know it's quite dark hopefully you can see it and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hold on to this tail and i'm going to start tightening tightening them up by pulling them tight. Now, even though I'm using a contrasting yarn, look at that, it tightens it up so nicely and you can't even see the yarn that I used. Now, I still recommend using a yarn that is similar or the same color as the one you knit your garment in. But for the sake of showing this technique, I think it is pretty interesting how the seam comes together so beautifully, you can't even see the color of the yarn. So I will continue across, I'm always, going underneath the legs of the stitch closest to the bound off edge. Here we are. And actually, once you've done this a couple of times, it gets pretty quick. So we have a few more in here. Now you don't have to tighten it every single stitch, but I recommend not getting too far away before you tighten it up because sometimes when you start pulling that working yarn, it can actually snap the yarn. Um, you don't want to create so much resistance by pulling it through. If you get halfway through and then tighten it, that's just waiting a little too long. So every couple of stitches, tighten it up and you're, you'll see just how neatly it secures these columns of stitches next to each other and creates a really lovely seam. You'll do this all the way across until you reach the end. And it's the same process over and over all the way all the way through. And like I said, you can do this on a, a sh shoulder that is sloped 
and that works nicely too and it's the same thing you'll just follow the stitches next to the bound off edge and that's all you do so if the edge slopes you just follow the slope and you just stay working under those stitches and again tighten it up and we would just continue on like that look how pretty that looks